first grade agar wood can cost as much as $100,000 per kilogram, making it one of the most expensive raw materials in the world. But for this tree to produce any agar wood, it must first become infected with mold. So how does this infection process work? What is agar wood used for? And what makes it so valuable? Aquilaria malacensis is a tree native to the rainforests of Southeast Asia. Prior to infection, the healthy heartwood inside Aquilaria trees is pale, odorless, and worthless. However, in the wild, damage to the tree by external forces, such as grazing animals, sporadically results in the growth of a specific type of fungal infection inside the tree, called Phylophora parasitica. The Aquilaria's defense to this attack is to produce a stress-induced aromatic resin, called aloes, which is dark and moist. Over the course of several years, the aloes slowly embed into the heartwood to create a garwood. Với kinh nghiệm của những người đi rừng á, thì thường thường người ta đến cái cây đó người ta nhìn vào người ta có thể đoán được là cái 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 con kiến nó đục vào cái lỗ đấy. Rồi khi nó đục vào là nó gây cái vết thương là cái nó trú ngụ ra vào rồi nó đem những cái vi sinh vật hoặc vi khuẩn hay các bào tử nấm ở các nơi nó đem vào. Thì cái cây đó cái con kiến nó ở trong con kiến nó có chất một cái chất dịch ở trong con kiến nó tiết ra nó làm cho cái vết thương nó tổn thương thì cái gió nó mới đưa nhựa nó bao lại lâu ngày nó xảy ra. Once a garwood is harvested, it needs to be separated from the healthy aquilaria wood around it. In a painstaking task that often takes hours, resin-infused chips, also known as oud, are carved out by hand. Oud chips are commonly used as incense, particularly in the Middle East, where they're burnt both as tokens of hospitality and infused into clothes and garments as a perfume. Khi đốt lên đầu tiên là mình thấy cái khói nó lên trước, rồi quá cái mùi hương thơm nó tỏa ra, hương thơm nó tỏa ra cái mùi rất là thơm đặc trưng của trầm hương không có cái hương nào bằng nó hết rồi sau đó nó mới từ từ nó có cái mùi ngọt dịu lại và nó kéo dài có thể là năm ba tiếng đồng hồ nếu trong phòng kín. Oud is also distilled into an essential oil, and in its purest form, aged oud oil can cost up to eighty thousand dollars per liter, earning the nickname amongst traders of liquid gold. As its popularity continues to grow in the West, oud has become a common ingredient in several high-value fragrances adding a warm, musky aroma. But due to unsustainable production and poaching, all varieties of Aquilaria trees are now classified as critically endangered, with experts estimating the global population has declined by 80% over the last 150 years. Even for those surviving Aquilaria trees, the frequency of natural fungal infection is extremely low. Some estimates say only 2% of wild Aquilaria trees are adequately infected to produce agarwood naturally, meaning the hunt to find natural agarwood is extremely arduous. Rồi cái tốt đấy chẳng hạn 5 người, 10 người đi có thể là đi 10, 15, 20 ngày nhưng mà khi mà có trầm ngày nào, sớm ngày nào thì về ngày đấy thôi. Có khi đi thì cũng chẳng có đâu. Có khi đi cả 10 mấy 20 hôm về cũng chẳng có gì hết. Rất là nguy hiểm. Nào là à, mưa, gió, xưa là đèo núi rồi rồi thú rừng rắn rết đủ thứ nên cái bỏ mạng là trong rừng là chuyện thường thôi cái thời đó là bỏ mạng là chuyện thường bây giờ không còn trầm nữa hết bây giờ trong rừng không còn trầm tức là cây dân mình đã khai thác là tận tận hết không còn nữa. With natural agarwood now bordering on extinction, in some forestries like this one managed by Truong in Vietnam, trees are artificially inoculated with a microbial compound to induce the all important resin. Trầm tự nhiên thì dân gian mình thường nói là là nó trong trong thiên nhiên nó hiếm nó khó nên là họ chuộng nhưng sự thật á nếu mà nói về cái chất lượng trầm nhân tạo với trầm thiên nhiên thì bây giờ chưa chắc trầm nhân tạo đã thua trầm thiên nhiên. Đúng trầm mà tự nhiên bây giờ giá trị của nó rất là cao chẳng hạn như nó có thể gấp 100 lần cái trầm nhân tạo vì cái trầm tự nhiên á là bây giờ nó không còn nữa nên người ta cũng muốn đưa cái giá nào vẫn được còn cái trầm nhân tạo là là dân gian người ta biết là là cái này làm từ con người mà ra nên tự đánh cái giá thấp xuống. A garwood was described as a fragrant product of wealth and luxury in one of the world's oldest written texts, the Sanskrit Vedas, dating back as early as 1400 BC. The aroma produced from a garwood has been highly valued by many cultures and religions throughout history. 
In the Nirvana Sutra, aloes is mentioned as a heavenly wood used in the cremation of Buddha. In the New Testament, Jesus' body was anointed with a mixture of myrrh and aloes following his crucifixion. And in the Sahih al-Bukhari hadith, the description of paradise by Allah's messenger includes the burning of agarwood as incense. The global market for agarwood is estimated to be worth a staggering $32 billion. But where oud was once so common, high demand has not only increased the price, but also the rate of harvesting and artificial production. By the end of 2029, the market is expected to double to $64 billion. Theo tôi cái kinh nghiệm lâu năm thì cái trầm hương này không có mai một đâu. Trầm hương sau này nó là một cái 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 vật sản quý giá cho đất nước đấy. Vì cái này là nguồn cung có khi không đủ cầu đâu. Vì tất cả các thế giới này trên thế giới bây giờ hầu như họ tập trung vào vào cái ngành trầm hương hết. Từ thượng vàng hạ cám chẳng hạn như là tinh dầu đến trầm rồi đến hương, hương nhang đấy rồi thì tiện chuối hạt đeo tay, đeo vòng đeo cổ, đấy nó không có mai một đâu nhưng mà có cái là bây giờ trước tiên sợ dân mình không có vốn để đầu tư. A scent common to the homes, cafes and shopping malls of the UAE is the smoky perfume oud and it's been pivotal to the region's cultures for centuries, but it's now having to move with the times. To get the full picture, Inspire was given exclusive access to a major oud perfumer in the Middle East. If you've ever wondered what the smell of success is like, most Middle Eastern perfumers will give you the same answer. Well, the smell of success would obviously be oud. The highly prized fragrance, characterized by its heady, musky notes, has been the cornerstone ingredient of traditional regional perfumes for thousands of years. Men wear the pure oil as cologne, whilst women commonly waft the exotic perfume through their hair and clothing through the wood chip incense version called Bahur. Three generations of Abdullah Ajmal's family have lived and breathed the oud business. People say about my father, they say oud speaks to him. He's able to identify the different grades, the different qualities. I can fairly comfortably say that we're covered for a few generations. Abdullah is banking that Oud's popularity won't wane, despite cheaper synthetic commercial perfumes flooding the market. And extracting the dark resin Oud from Indian agarwood trees is a costly business for him, with a kilo of wood yielding just one milliliter of resin and a 12 milliliter bottle of high quality Oud perfume fetching around $3,000. To keep up with demand for the luxury product in the Middle East, Ashmal imports more than 40 tons of oud wood every year, and its manufacture is long and arduous. It is absolutely worth it because labor of love, that is the essence of it all. Perfumery industries, it's an apprentice style uh, professions, and you've got to be patient and you have to have the passion. Abdullah, I wish we had smell vision because there's a fruity, smoky, peppery smell in the air, but no two noses are the same. So how do you interpret oud? We're both smelling the same thing, but some origins have the fruity aspects. Indian, for example, tends to be more earthy. Uh, Far Eastern versions tend to be more smoky. So these are the only subtle differences, but obviously for the customer, it makes a huge difference. Emiratis prefer more Indian origin notes, whereas Saudis prefer more what's called Cambodi, but typically it's more from the Far East. Oud smell can be affected by many factors, from the wood's origin to whether it's wild or cultivated, and even how long it's purified at high temperatures in pressurized vats. Famous global perfume houses have started to integrate oud into their ranges in order to target Middle East clients. And Emirati chemical engineer and perfume mogul Ali al Jaberi, who manufactures his fragrances in France, believes this caters well to changing consumer tastes. He also points to local clients increasingly seeking out personalized fragrances from boutique producers with very limited production. Today, I guess niche perfumery is the trend worldwide, especially in this region, where uh, the growth is really dramatic and it's even attracting big companies to be part of it. Niche perfumery is like brands are dedicated to quality perfumes. Uh, they're really small, uh, they don't have a big budget, 
but they're all about quality perfumes. Ali represents progressive perfumery and believes that infusing traditional local ingredients like oud with notes from afar is the way forward. I love vanilla. Vanilla blends very well with oriental fragrances. It's like the international sweet scent. You can never go wrong with it. Despite his designs on reinventing oud for the future, Ali will always be respectful of its past. Growing up in a culture where perfumes and incense and oils are a big part of it, um, I still remember when my mother used to burn frankincense in particular, especially in the afternoon. Uh, my grandmother loved oud oils, so she was using oud and that. Maralke Agarwood Oil, a high quality fragrance material that is based from this chopped up chosen Maralke woods. First, the woods are grilled with a grinder until it becomes tiny little flakes. The flakes are collected and being weighed exactly 40 kilos for each distillator to ensure production quality. After the wood flakes are transported inside the distillation chamber, the chamber will be filled with 150 liters of clean water. The distillation chamber is then locked and being heated with liquid petroleum gas to ensure both the temperature and pressure consistency. The heating process resumes until the pressure reaches the level of 2 kg per square centimeter in consistent temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. The distillation process now starts. For each 40 kilos of wood flakes, agarwood oil distillation normally takes 8 to 10 hours to produce tiny amount of 35 to 50 milliliter of oil. The distillated oil will then extract 